Hey guys, and welcome to the race video from the World Cup in Tijawaros in Hungary. I'm gonna tell you right away that this is gonna be both a very spectacular bike video, but also a very sad story in the end. So, starting at the beginning, I got out of the water in 7th position, right at the back end of the lead group. When we stood on the pontoon just before the start, um, we already saw that uh, black cloud coming towards us um, after a otherwise pretty sunny day and hot day. And it was just starting to um, rain some drops just before the start. And when we got out of the water, it was like a real rain. So at the beginning, uh, as you can see, I was uh, a little bit behind the first group but I was able to catch up pretty fast, obviously. But obviously you have to put down the pedal anyways at the beginning of the bike in any race. So the first minute or two was basically always between 400 and 500 watts with the peaks going up to 800 watts, as you can see. But as we were all not really expecting rain, we all had um, quite a high pressure on our tires so it that makes things a little more complicated especially in that uh, turnaround at the beginning um, I saw one guy in the front group there um, almost um, sliding and he was like 45 degrees um, to his uh, direction of movement so I knew that it was uh, that this turnaround turnaround would be really really slippery and yeah obviously I um, stalled down things a little bit um, because nobody really knew how the roads would behave in wet conditions. I will take you around the loop for the full first lap. There was eight laps in total, eight laps of 2.5k, uh, meaning 20k in total, of course. And this is actually pretty special um, for a triathlon race, because usually we have like two or three laps, maybe four laps on the bike. And this eight lap um, bike ride was more of a criteria criterium I would say than a classical triathlon bike race and the rain obviously made things a lot more complicated especially because it's not raining very often in uh, that place so the um, the roads get really slippery when it actually does start to rain and in such a bike pack obviously you have uh, stronger riders uh, from the technical point of view and weaker riders I would say I, would, I was roughly in the middle. There were, there were some riders that um, took the turns better than me and also some that uh, struggled a little more. But I was always able to um, catch up after the, after the turns. And yeah, obviously everybody has their, um, has their difficult moments at some turns. Because if you ride such a course for the first time, you always have to adapt to the conditions and see how the how slippery the turns actually are. And the big problem for us was that the rain was actually steadily growing um, heavier and heavier. And in the first few laps, it was just heavy rain. And then from lap to lap, things started to get crazier and crazier um, regarding the weather conditions. The first thing that happened, like you can see here on the inside, is um, that yeah, on the, those inside of, of the corners there were puddles uh, growing and growing and they were getting deeper and deeper and you couldn't really see where you were riding through, like what if there were any potholes on the insides and you, everybody was just hoping that uh, while riding through those puddles that um, there wouldn't be anything dangerous underneath it. And also, maybe you can see it a little bit, the, the winds um, are starting to get heavier and heavier and those uh, fences on the left and the right, um, they were starting to get blown onto the, onto the race course. And that actually um, made things more dangerous. We didn't have a really dangerous situation in our pack, but um, we saw that, that those uh, fences were getting closer and closer uh, in that transition zone area. So there were a few guys in the front like uh, Jürgen Gundersen from Norway or Seth Ryder from the USA 
that were trying to really push the pace um, around those corners because they were quite uh, comfortable around around the wet conditions. And you do that to because you know that um, a big pack like that always stretches out around the corners and especially around uh, that um, turnaround point that we were getting to right now. And if you just ride hard um, around those t turns and uh, turning points, that you know um, by stretching out the field so much, it will it'll be really hard for the guys in the back because um, you always um, have to put in uh, like a minute or even two minutes um, of above 400 or 500 watts to catch back up if a, if a group gets stretched out like that. Because as you can see here, uh, the turning point is so slow in these conditions. Uh, it's not very um, wide there, the road. And now you can start uh, see see me starting catching back up. And yeah, the wattage is above 600 or 500 watts. And then when I started to catch up again, then uh, there's the next turn um, coming up in a few meters. And then the same thing again. So it's like going all out um, for half a minute and then no watts at all, trying to uh, get around the corner without slipping. And then again, like half a minute to a minute um, of really, really, really hard wattage. Now I'm cutting a little bit further into the bike leg. And as you can see, there's a pack of, I think it was 18 guys forming. A few guys caught up from, uh, from the chase pack. And it was pretty much the perfect situation for me, I would say, because the best runners, um, two or three of the best runners, um, they didn't make that pack. Um, they struggled too much on the very technical swim. And also everybody obviously had tired legs after that bike ride, because uh, you always have to catch up and, and that just takes so much out of your, out of your legs. So when I looked through the names of our group, um, I thought, well, I would definitely um, try to run with the leaders and maybe even uh, go for my first World Cup victory or at least um, a medal. Still, I have obviously I have a huge respect for everyone um, riding there, but I knew that um, I was in great shape um, with my running and I was able to save a lot during the semi-finals on the day before the final. So um, yeah, that was pretty much the perfect situ situation for me um, to have there in the race. But now we're getting to the sad part of the video. As you can see, the, the rain is, uh, already in has already increased um, by a lot from the start and it's even hard to see anymore. Uh, with all the spray from from the riders uh, in front of me and yeah as I said the the conditions didn't improve and now I'm cutting straight to the entry of the last lap so as I said it was eight laps and we are now heading into transition um, for the last time meaning just one or one lap to go and this was basically exactly when things got really crazy. Um, so far it was only re really heavy rain, which was okay. But just as we started to um, cross the finish line here, um, things were getting harder and harder and uh, it was definitely hail coming down. And the hail really hurt on, on the skin uh, if you ride through it with 40k per hour. I'll just turn the volume up a little bit so you can actually hear the hail um, hitting my camera. Those were definitely the worst conditions I've ever ridden in, in a triathlon race. The most dangerous thing in that situation was that I had no clue and probably um, all of the other riders as well didn't know how hail would behave on the road, like how do you take the turns uh, with hail on the roads 
and also with those steep puddles um, just in the corners. But um, luckily there wasn't any incidents um, in those few meters here. But then right away um, there was people standing on the sidelines and also a motorbike um, riding next to us um, with their um, hands waving at us. And you can see one of the guys um, just in the middle of the road in a few seconds. And they were trying to stop us. They, they told us that um, the race was cancelled due to the conditions. Obviously, um, it's hard to stop a race like that because um, some of the guys, um, yeah, nobody really knew if that actually meant um, that the race was stopped or if they just wanted us to be cautious uh, in those conditions. But then, um, yeah, in the end, uh, when we rode into the transition to, to our transition, there were already people standing there blocking the way and they were trying to get us into the hotel as fast as possible to protect everyone and yeah that's when the race was definitely at its end and no no one of the athletes could really believe it that they just cancelled the race obviously it was for uh, security reasons and I think um, after a little while of cooling down uh, nobody really wants to blame anyone for uh, trying to protect the spectators as well as athletes but yeah, for some athletes it was um, just like, one race um, that they missed um, due to very bad luck. For me, obviously, um, it's a little more complicated and um, I also couldn't believe it because I was going there to do a top 10 to fulfill the criteria of my national federation for the WTS series. So I would have had to do um, a top 10 result there. Uh, to be allowed to at least go to the last two events of the WTS. And then there is a thunderstorm coming and rain and heavy winds for the first time in the 20, 22 years um, that the event is running there. Uh, they had to cancel one of the races because of bad weather. And yeah, I obviously I still can't believe it. I uh, probably need a lot more time. Uh, to let that sink in that just that bad luck made me miss the season of the WTS races now anyways thanks for watching and hopefully I will have a more cheerful video next time from the next race and yeah as always um, subscribers will get each video one day earlier than everybody else on Facebook so if you want to have those, those video as one of the first, just click on the subscribe button and help me with that. See you next time, guys.